Hey, what's up everyone? It's Dave Stone with the first episode of Be Awesome here and I'm here with Cricket who is a beekeeper. She's gonna explain to us everything that we need to become an urban beekeeper. And in fact, I'm gonna be getting bees from her soon, so I need to learn all this stuff too. So that's why we're gonna do this video. This is gonna be a really cool series. We're gonna have a lot of cool videos on everything about bees. But let's talk about, um, so how long have you been a beekeeper? Just two years. Two years, cool. And what's your goal and mission in life? Well, my goal is to help people bring bees into their backyard. Okay, urban beekeeping. There's a lot of questions around that that I think a lot of people have. Yeah. But it's exciting because we're going to be addressing all those questions in upcoming videos. All right, so we obviously are going to need a hive, and this looks like a really beautiful hive. Did right. you paint that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> That's awesome. You're an artist. Um, so tell us what we need to be a beekeeper. Okay, so first you need a hive. Okay. And there's different kinds of hives. So there's top bar hives, there's Langstroth hives like this, there's Warre hives, there's flow hives, which are basically a Langstroth. And so you decide what kind you want first, okay. do a little research. But in Arizona, I really recommend Langstroth hives okay. over top bars because right. of our heat. Oh, okay. So this has a better heat. Is it because of the top reflects sun or something? No, it's because the top bar has, this is not a top bar, but if you can imagine, this is beeswax. It just melts off. Oh. If bees are only building on the top bar and it gets to be 120 degrees, that can just fall. Mm. Last year, I had a lot of beekeeper friends whose hives died because the wax melted off the top and, and sealed the entrance so the bees were stuck. Okay, so a difference between a top bar hive, it wouldn't have this panel. It would only have a top bar. It wouldn't even have the sides or bottom. Oh, just a bar, and then they would just build on the bottom. And yep. then a Langstroth hive actually has this whole frame. Yep. And like, what is this? So, well, that's, let me use this one for an example. This is a plastic foundation. Okay. So it's made with cells the right size for worker bees. And this is also coated with beeswax. Oh, okay. So the bees get to automatically, here you can smell it, have something to build on. Oh, cool. Oh yeah, I can feel yeah. the beeswax right on here. And there's all, so that's a yellow foundation. And then there's also black foundation, which I prefer because it's really easy doing your inspections to see the little um, eggs and larva because they're white. So it's easy to see on a black background. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. And this is coated with wax too? Yep. All coated with beeswax. I like black too. The black looks nice. If you do go with a natural foundation like this beeswax. Um, so this is all beeswax? This is 100% beeswax. This is stamped. Oh, wow. So if you go with something like that, you're gonna wanna put wires in your frame. You don't know if you can see this, but you get, um, your frames come with holes and you can wire it yourself. And then the bees can have, this just gives it support. Support. In the frame here, you can see that it comes with holes and then you can add a screw and a wire through here and it's pretty much just like a support. Cause this beeswax here is, it's a beeswax back, but it's a little bit flimsier than a plastic. Will it melt? Oh yeah, I mean you can see it's already warm. Oh, this one will melt a little bit too, so. Also white. I don't recommend it in, in southern Arizona. And I guess some, some people would probably like using the wax because they feel it would be more natural for the right. bees. So is there any negatives of using a plastic? Well, I don't think there's or? anything negative um, other than people who don't want to use plastic, maybe. Okay, but it doesn't like disintegrate or anything. No, that's, it doesn't. That's the thing about plastic, it lasts forever. Right? <laughs> it can be a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. Um, okay, so this, these look really small though. Is this how big they actually are in the hive here? Yeah, so let me explain this hive. This is a Langstroth hive and it comes with, um, this is a telescoping cover. So um, this cover is about $25. I'll go through the pricing. So it comes with, you get a cover and then there's different size boxes. So okay. this is called a honey super or a medium box. And you can do your entire hive in just medium boxes, or you can um, use a deep box. A lot of beekeepers use one deep box for the brood, another deep box for honey for the bees, and then everything above that is a medium box. So those are the different sizes. Yeah, and there's these come in 10 frame and 8 frame. 10 frame and 8 frame, these so are, what are these? These what are 10. You? These are 10. Yeah. And do you fill them all the way? It looks like they're full all the way up in here. <laughs> That's so, so important. You have to put 10 frames in a 10 frame because um, I've known some beekeepers who thought, oh, I'm just going to put four in here and see what happens. But if you see what happens, 
the bees will start building the comb this way and you have to rip the whole thing apart. Oh, wow. So it's important. Langstroth um, designed these to have something called bee space, which is this spacing. Okay, so they, they won't ever get crushed. They won't get crushed and this is just the space, enough space for them to crawl around without building, um, attaching these frames together, mm. which you don't want to happen. So, I mean, it happens sometimes. And Langstroth was the guy? Yeah, in the 1800s, kind of standardized beekeeping oh, boxes wow. in the United States. Um, you know, other countries have their own things as so, well. So you can kind of mix and match boxes then. You could kind of do uh, two of these big ones. Yeah, or there's, you could do two of these ones yeah, or four there's of reasons, these reasons for all of it. So when you're lifting these boxes off to inspect, which you need to do here about weekly, this box when it's full is going to be 60 to 80 pounds. And oh. this box when it's full could be 80 to 100 pounds. Oh, so gotcha. I, my um, beekeeper friend only uses um, mediums, which I I might start doing, but a lot of people standard-wise use, this is called a deep, so if they would use two of those for the bees, and then anything above it is the honey that we would get, and you might do that with awesome. this called a honey super or a medium box. Okay. And they're just sitting on here, they're not attached. So you've got this box, super or a medium, then the deep, and a bottom board. Okay. So oh, a bottom whole, board. What, so tell us about this bottom board. It's really just a simple board. So, okay, so it just houses, see the bottom under here. Yeah, they're all hollow. And so then it's like a runway. I mean, that's kind of like their bay. They're right. like garage yep. space. They run in or fly in. <laughs> and then they can get directly all the way up in here. So I heard something too, like you have to keep the queen separated from something. Like, is there like a queen separator or something like uh, that for a hive like this? There's a queen excluder that some people use. So it's a, it looks like a grill and it's just small enough for all the other bees to get through, but drones and queens are too big to get And through. so it would go right there. It well, would like lay here where the queen is. You can use it is. all different ways. If you're trying to keep the queen in your hive to prevent swarming, you would put it on the bottom. Oh. But then you're also not letting drones in and out. Oh, at the bottom. That's where they get out. They actually, yeah. the exit and yeah. entrance is at the bottom. If you're trying to keep the queen from getting in this box, like if you want to, if you're just wanting honey, um, you don't want her laying eggs in the cells, mm. then you'd put the queen excluder here. Gotcha. Some people don't use them ever. And there's, it's just ways of using a queen excluder. Sometimes if you can't find the queen, you put the queen excluder on top and dump the bees on and all the other bees go down except her. Gotcha, so okay. It's, it's a useful thing, but okay. um, different ways of using it. Cool, so we have a hive. So we, you're gonna need a hive when you're ready to do bees. And we're gonna do more videos on all, all things hive related. This video is about all the materials that you're gonna need to, to become a beekeeper. So definitely need a hive. And these are just some different Things that go in the hive, right? What yeah, are they different called? options are frames. Frames that go in the hive. And then obviously you're gonna need one of these if you're gonna actually, you probably should have one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there's sometimes when your bees are nice enough that you don't have to wear it. Yeah. But I usually have one on. I might not have the hood on or the gloves on, but you need a bee suit because sometimes your bees are not nice. Yeah. They have moods. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. And, so and you, you rescue safer. bees. Yeah. I rescue when you bees. rescue bees, you really kind of got to wear this. <laughs> yeah. They're, you know, you're ripping out their home. And they're mad at probably the people that want them gone anyway. The and they're, don't want yeah. them there. Yeah. They don't like it and you're disrupting them by moving them. But you do it in some really cool ways. And I can't wait to show you guys how, how she rehabilitates bees. And you call it rehabilitate. I call it rehabilitating. I love it. They're, they're moving their house somewhere else, but they've been slightly Africanized, right? Most bees out here? Well, 95% of the bees in Arizona are Africanized. So I just assume that any bees that I rescue are Africanized. And that scares most people. It does. Because may, everybody has made fear around this Africanized bees. And I, I think maybe that some of it's deserved because Africanized bees can attack, but then if we're going to do urban beekeeping, we just have to know what it means so we're not scared, so we can address them and approach it, you know, respectfully as, mm -hmm. you know, another living creature. But so instead of killing an Africanized hive, she talks about rehabilitating an Africanized hive. Yeah. I think that's super cool. It is super cool and it, it keeps the hive alive and then it allows us to put that hive in our backyard. Mm -hmm. Cool. I love that. Um, okay, so yeah, so that's crazy. So you can actually, yeah, yeah, I guess uh, if everything's Africanized out here pretty much, 
you wouldn't really want to tell someone you have Africanized bees in your backyard, but you have rehabilitated bees in That's your right. backyard. <laughs> well, and they're not really, they're no longer Africanized because it's a whole new genetic pool that you put in your hive. Oh, okay. so because you added queen. Yeah, the queen, the new queen has already been mated, and so she's not got any Africanized genes oh, in her. Okay. So bees' lives are not long. So after another generation of her eggs, then they're only from her one mating. Gotcha. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, cool. This is exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. So we got the, the hive, we got the frames, and this is a bee suit. I want you to talk a little about this one. In Arizona, look at your shirt. Arizona beekeepers are hot. <laughs> True story on all accounts, but uh, it is so hot out here, and this, hot, this suit is ventilated. So talk about this one a little bit. Yeah, so a normal bee suit is made of cotton like this and it's it keeps you from being stung this is semi-ventilated but in arizona it can be 120 degrees and you still have to maintain your hive so to put something on like this is so much nicer because the bees can't sting you but um the air flows through it's it's awesome this is definitely the way to go in Arizona. Uh, so how much are bee suits and you do you, you sell? Yeah, I sell bee suits. Um, a lot of people, you can buy them on, on Amazon or um, you can buy them from me. But this these suits are about $60 and a suit, a ventilated suit can be 100 to $200 depending okay. on where you get it and sizing probably. That's not too bad. No, it's not. And you wash them. They're, they last a long time. Okay. It's rare when you get stung through a bee suit. Yeah, you can. I mean, if you sit on one, they're, it will sting you. Or if your face gets, if your face Touch touches right this, against, they can sting you. But for the most part, it's, I just consider it bee venom therapy and move yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, cool. So we got our we got our uh, suits, and we'll show you how to use these suits soon. I'm I'm really excited about that. <laughs> it's like like a play. We're we're like we're like on stage in a play. Where we're getting our costumes on, and we're gonna go. <laughs> do a show for these bees or we're gonna allow the bees to show for us so. that's fun all right so we got some gloves oh too. yeah you need gloves i brought these to show you this is what they end up looking like after two times probably after two times so you get brand new gloves and they're yeah. not brand new brand new yeah. gloves are like this <laughs> <laughs> yeah there you go but that's okay because these are used they're worn in there's a lot of amazing honey on here and you can tell when people use their tools and this these are so these are goat skin and these are cow skin and depending on if you're working with um, relocations you might want some thicker gloves but these are completely sufficient yeah these are great oh gotcha so these are a little thicker the that's an area you tend to get stung in and yeah and then, then you have this thing so that'll come up over your suit so is it often that a bee can get underneath there and into your Not suit? Not very often. Rare, probably. So what else do we need? Well, you need a smoker. This is, you know, the quintessential beekeeper tool. This is what you use to keep the bees busy and make them fill up with honey so they don't sting you as much. Make them fill up with honey? Yeah, so when a bee, when you smoke a bee, it, well, the theory is, because you don't know for sure, but the theory is that it causes them to think that their home is on fire so they start to consume honey and nectar so that they can move. So when they're full of honey and nectar, one, they don't fly so well, and they can't bend to sting you. Mm. And it keeps them busy. I mean, there's a lot of benefit. These have a lot of pheromones. There's attack yeah. pheromones. There's gotcha. um, other kinds of pheromones that this also masks. And if you get stung by a bee, are you now marked? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good to know. <laughs> It's true, you're marked. They say that that person um, is um, in need of more steam. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, okay. So when you have this smoker, there's all kinds of things you can use to smoke. This one, I just grabbed this, it was $1.88 for a bag of okay. smoker chips. They're super dry and it's easy to so smoke. So you fill this up with chips and yeah. just burn it? We'll have to do a video on okay. how to do it. How do you there's, smoke them? There's method. Video. And I mean, look, you've got what you tell me you Plenty of stuff to smoke with. So you just grab a handful of that. Sweet. And also, this tool is awesome because I used to just use this tool. Yo, yeah. And wow, I love this torch. <laughs> <laughs> this is 
awesome. Yeah. So I think this is essential, actually. Okay, cool. So definitely need a torch, a smoker, some some wood chips of some sort. What what else can you put in the smoker? Just wood chips of any kind? Or? They make pellets that are oh, okay. that start. Um, pine needles are really good. Pine but needles. It's really nice to just forage. Okay. And find it. Yeah. But if you can't, it's good to have something available. Okay. Awesome. So there's one more tool that we're not. Okay, what's the about. last tool that we have? The last tool is also probably the most important, and okay. I don't have it because I lose it all the time. <laughs> it's called a hive tool. A hive tool. Yeah, it helps you pry apart your boxes, pry apart your frames, um, because the bees have something. So you called, put it in and like twist yep, it. Bees have something called propolis that they make from the resin of trees, and they glue everything. You can see it. All this oh. brown stuff is propolis, which is very medicinal but it's very strong glue. Mm. And so that hive tool, you pry under here to get the boxes Oh, so apart. the boxes will stick oh, together yeah, and everything. Oh yeah, everything sticks together. So the hive tool is super important. It's really important. If you don't have it, you can, I keep butter knives or whatever because you, you just need to be able to pry it. But okay. I'm sorry I don't have that tool with me. All good, all good, awesome. Okay, so another couple of things. Okay, so that, that's all the materials that we're gonna need for this uh, to become an urban beekeeper. Really, right? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, there's other little things you can get, you know, accessories, but this is the basic. Okay, so it's really not that, I mean, how much would all this kind of cost it? So say we wanted to get a hive, a suit, some gloves, a smoker, and a hive right. tool. I mean, just to get the materials, not the right. bees. Right, so. What are we looking at? Okay, like this hive set up right here, which is one deep, one super, a telescoping cover, and a bottom board would be about one, Okay, 170. Full of frames and all of it. You can also assemble it yourself for cheaper. So 170 and then you've got a suit which could be 60 to 200 and then you've got a smoker which is about $20, $24. This is $25. So two, four, so we're basically well, like at $10, about $500 if we wanted to go all out and kind of just buy all the nice stuff. Yeah. And if we, we, so it'd probably be anywhere from like 200 to 500 bucks yes, to get started. exactly. So that's really not that bad. Um, and bees are gonna save the world, everybody. <laughs> I know you know that, or maybe you're thinking about it, about it, or somebody around you knows that, but now you know it because you just heard me say it. But it's literally the mo one of the most important things we could be thinking about. Just because we get stung doesn't mean we should be afraid of bees. We should have a healthy fear of certain things and a healthy respect for bees, but we definitely shouldn't be afraid of them. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. What do you think about that? Well, I don't think you should be afraid of bees. Um, in fact, bees generally only sting you if you're disrupting their home. So it's kind of like people. Exactly. Like, like people. They got a gun on the, like a sign on the door, you know, come to my house, I'll shoot you. It's like, you know, it's like bees. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They have to, they, I mean, they've got delicious honey in there. Yeah. They've, They've got to protect their their home, so you know their only defense mechanism is stinging. Mm -hmm. They're little tiny bugs. Okay, so now we got all the materials here. So next thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to look around my property. We're gonna have to find a location to put a hive, and there's certain requirements for location. What 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 do we have to think about in when we place our hive somewhere at our house? Like where we're gonna put it? Right. So you want in Arizona, you want to find a shady spot and you want it to also be in an area that doesn't have a lot of traffic so you're not disturbing the hive regularly, even though you can sit by your hive for hours a day. But um, you also need to realize where the bees are gonna be flying in and out. So it is like flight a- Flight path. Flight path, like, and you'll, you'll see, it's amazing. And you can walk in front of it and get hit by bees. So okay. you're gonna face the entrance away from where people are walking. Okay. Um, just make sure it's a protected area with shade. And a stand, is it on a stand is good? Oh, good point. So a hive definitely one on a stand because ants or water okay. or other things can get in it. And the height of the stand is kind of important. This right here looks like it'd be awesome. Like this is like so easy to lift up, but this is way, way too high. Okay. Because when you've got other boxes on here and they're heavy, can you imagine lifting hundred oh, yeah. pounds from right here? Yeah. So I recommend about a foot off the ground. So like a 12 inch base? Yeah, 12 to 18 is perfect. 18. And cinder blocks are actually cinder what blocks. a lot of people use. Will the bees go down in the in the cinder blocks and build hives down there too? Or not, not usually. Not usually. Mm -hmm. Cool, so yeah, you can keep it as simple as a couple cinder blocks. You can build a little stand. So 12 inches off the ground. And then, um, so we're gonna have location. 
And we're probably gonna want an Arizona for like a shade on the west side of the hive. For we're probably sure. gonna want like west and possibly top shade because the sun's so intense here. Yeah. I've seen hives out just in the middle of a field in Arizona yeah. though, but too, but like. You just have to put some kind of shade on them. Okay. And actually, you know what, ideally is a deciduous tree because then they're getting, like these trees here have the perfect shade in the summer and then their leaves are gone in the winter mm. so the sun can heat the hive. Mm, great idea, okay. So in the winter, maybe we can even, if we build a shade structure, maybe it can kind of come down. Yeah, for sure. For the winter, mm -hmm. come up. And if it's a tree shade structure, a deciduous tree would be perfect. So, awesome. I love living shade structures. That's kind of my favorite. Yeah. But little walls have to happen sometimes. Well, you can put a wall up and then plant a tree there. True story. Or a vine. What about vines? vines awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Put passion fruits because they have so many flowers. Yeah. And then they would automatically get right? pollinated if they're right next. Because I got to hand pollinate that. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, Lufa is an awesome one here because it blooms in the summer and the bees love it okay and then it's gone in the winter so oh, cool okay so we're gonna go around my yard now we're gonna find the proper place to place this hive because i'm gonna have a lot of trees back there we're gonna have a little water feature i'm getting a fountain today awesome a big fountain awesome yeah he's not using it because every time you turn on a fountain it will attract bees yeah. and if you don't want bees around your house then give me your fountain. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have all these fountains. I know, exactly. If you don't want bees around your house before we go look at my yard, you need to call a local beekeeper, yes. not a local exterminator. Because exterminators don't know anything about bees. All they know how to do is kill things really good. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't kill bees, uh, it pains me, hurts my heart when bees die even though I got stung in the face yesterday. <laughs> but you know why? It's because someone exterminated their hive, sprayed it with poison, and all the bees that were gone came back to a dead hive with yeah. poison honey and probably went crazy. So when I looked over, I didn't know it had already been sprayed. When I looked over this fence, this big giant head's popping out over their house and boom, right, oh. tagged me right in the eye, right here. <laughs> but I didn't, it didn't swell up. This was uh, two, two days ago. So it wasn't too bad. My face burned a little bit, but bee stings are also immune therapy, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's something we'll really get into also, but hi baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now we're gonna go look in the yard. We're gonna find a place to put my hive and then I have to probably build some stuff yeah. to make the bees happy, but we'll do it, so. <laughs> She's a camera hog. I see. <laughs> 